Hey, it's comic artist Pro Secrets. You are listening to Ethan Van Skyver, 25-year veteran of the comic book industry, creator of Cyberfrog, the largest crowdfunded comic book of all time. Don't have one yet? There's a link in the description below. You can still pre-order your copy. Uh, this is Joe Casada right here. Pfft, Joe Casada at Joe Casada. Joey DeQ. Joey DeQ. Uh, who's Joe Casada? Well, uh, he was the EIC of Marvel Comics. Uh, now I think he's the chief creative officer. What does that mean? I think he works with movies and television media. I think that's his job now. Uh, it's separate and apart from um, Marvel Comics publishing. But he was the EIC of Marvel Comics. So he was there. He gave me my first job at Marvel. Um, but I knew him before that. He's, he's a New Yorker. Uh, he was always doing, uh, he was one of the Wizard Top 10 artists, uh, you know, before I was. Uh, and was always doing great stuff. He does great work. He's a, a great creative mind. Uh, and when he worked for Marvel Comics as the EIC, uh, there were some cats that he couldn't wrangle. I mean, Marvel Comics was still a den uh, full of uh, liars and uh, just schemers. It was bad. It was just bad back then. It still isn't good, but at least when I worked there, I saw it firsthand. And you can go watch some of these videos I made called uh, Marvel Comics Days. I think it's a four-part video series that I did. Uh, I think they'll be informative. Um, so Joe Casada was the EIC of Marvel Comics at that time, and he managed to pull it out of the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, and then, of course, he moved on. I think he moved on in 2005 um, and relinquished control to uh, Axel Alonso. And listen, I think it's been going downhill ever since. And that's my personal opinion. Uh, but here's Joe Casada. Uh, he comes up, he pops up, and he just hits me with this. Uh, well, he's been on a three-day tirade on Twitter. Um, and he joins a crowd. He joins a, tr a crowd of, uh, you know, uh, a parade, I would say, of, you know, high up, you know, influential people uh, within the comic book industry, such as it is, uh, who are demanding uh, Zach, your boy Zach, uh, <laughs> they're demanding his head. Now, your boy Zach, also known as Richard C. Meyer, uh, also known as the owner, operator, <laughs> CEO of the YouTube channel, very popular YouTube channel, Diversity in Comics. Diversity in Comics uh, has been the bane of the comic book industry since it first emerged around April of uh, last year. Okay, So he's been doing this a little longer than me. Uh, Zach Richard C. Meyer, uh, he has a very simple operating plan. It's not dissimilar from what I'm doing right now. Uh, he points his camera, this is the camera, uh, actually his iPhone or his phone, uh, at a comic book, I point mine at my iPad, uh, and then we just talk. Uh, he points his camera at uh, his a comic book that he's purchased, and he reviews it. Now, uh, he loves comics. He's loved comics his whole life. He's a veteran, and uh, you know, comics, uh, comic book heroes. He's told me, especially GI Joe, uh, helped get him through those rough times in Afghanistan. I mean, really scary times where you you need to think heroically because you could lose your life. Uh, you could be injured. You could not come home at all. I mean, you know, you really need to um, uh, you need to think of yourself um, in, in a different way. Uh, I, I admire people who have served. I admire veterans. I admire people who are currently deployed. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. It sounds terrifying to me. Yeah, I'm just a listen. I'm just a frog merchant and a t-shirt merchant and an ink merchant, <laughs> a humble one. I don't know how enlisted people do it. I salute you. Uh, you know, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I have tremendous respect for Zach. Tremendous respect for Richard C. Meyer. Now, does that mean he's perfect? Absolutely not. Richard C. Meyer uh, has made videos, uh, many, many, many videos, probably numbering in the thousands. And, uh, you know, when you're reviewing comic books over and over again, and you're starting to notice the SJW um, infiltration of comics, and you're starting to be able to pick out key players. Uh, people who are actually involved in this, and you're starting to notice specific tropes uh, about uh, their work that recur uh, and you think are damaging to comics, and you're watching their YouTube behavior, their social media behavior, as they all come out and they, they say ridiculous things like, well, you know, if you, if you don't like it, fuck off, Nazi, don't buy it. Uh, this, is not, this is not the attitude we have, you know, discerned. This is not the attitude. Um, that a professional should have towards his customers ever. All right, this is just not the right attitude. Uh, now, 
uh, right around the time the election happened. Uh, so that was right around November 9th, 2016, to be uh, actually precise. So it's just precise. It wasn't right around. That was exactly when it happened. Uh, comic book professionals, my fellow professionals, uh, began to turn their backs on me because I came out as a Trump supporter proudly. And I still am. I still am. Uh, and, uh, you know, many of them said, how could you do this? Don't you understand what you've done and how many people you're upsetting? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know that. I don't understand that at all. I refuse to understand that. I refuse to, I refuse to understand, uh, you know, the feelings of people who are overreacting, having lost a presidential election. I'm sorry, you'll get another chance in four years. Uh, it seems absurd to me and childish. Uh, but uh, these people spent a year um, creating a campaign to get me drummed out of mainstream comics. They called me a Nazi. They found they dug into my past social media and uh, found two examples of me making Nazi references and then projected that to mean that I probably was a Nazi, in fact. Um, ridiculous, absurd, uh, but, you know, nightmarish because it's hard to be called a Nazi. Nobody wants to be called a Nazi. I don't even think real Nazis want to be called Nazis anymore. They're like 92. They're 92 years old. They don't want to be reminded of that. Well, I am not. You know, I am I am uh, pure of heart and soul uh, and none of those things. And this stuff was uh, obviously um, an attempt by social justice warriors within comics uh, to punish me uh, for who I was and to also warn off other professionals. Do not come out as a Republican. Do not come out as a right winger. Don't do it because we will do to you what we are doing to Ethan Van Sciver. All right, so. Um, all through this, uh, I was watching Diversity in Comics videos, and I found them to be very enlightening. I didn't always agree with what he said or how he said it. Uh, I mean, that's, that's an important thing. Uh, SJWs don't understand that. They don't understand how, uh, you know, you can agree with something overall, uh, but not be in 100% compliance with every single word, and also how you can uh, not take full responsibility um, for every single word that a YouTuber is saying that you are enjoying. I don't take a responsibility for everything Zach says at all. Uh, not at all. Uh, he can go out and he can, uh, he can sling an insult at somebody, and that's, that's his business. That's between him and uh, that person. But see, there's a weird kind of omerta uh, that's emerging here. This idea that I need to protect my fellow comic book professionals. Uh, the same ones uh, that didn't stand up for me when I was being pilloried as a Nazi. I mean, they didn't not like a few people reached out to me in private and said, man, this sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, it does suck. It was horrible. It was horrifying. You know, I couldn't make a personal appearance without being threatened. Uh, and when I did make a personal appearance, uh, the place that I appeared at was vandalized the next day. Um, you know, I saw people saying very rude, disrespectful things to me. And uh, that, is, uh, that is the reality of things. The reality of the situation is the comic book industry uh, is Burger King, okay? But they're making, they're, right now, uh, I don't know what they're making. What, what is Burger King making for people? They're making soy-based patties. People don't want these. People don't want soy-based <laughs> vegetarian burgers. Most, most people don't. They go to Burger King to get fast food. They want, they want a sloppy, hot, cheesy, uh, salty meal. They want it right now. Uh, they want it to be fun, uh, and they want to leave. So that's, that's what comics are supposed to be. They're not. Right now, comic books under the current uh, leadership, under the current creative uh, control of the far left, um, they're endeavoring to use comic books as a way to preach social justice and charge you to hear it. So you've actually got to pay 4 to $5. The, it, what's even more insulting is the cover price is increasing. So the cover price is increasing. The quality of the comics visually is going down for the most part. Now, comics can't afford big name talent anymore. You know, they, they can't. And big name talent is moving on to other things. They're moving on to video games and television and movies. Uh, so they're hiring talent, that, you know, at a, at a cheap cost. The cover price is going up. And then the content of the comics is actually insulting to 50% of the world. Not a great business model. Not something that uh, I believe in uh, as a creator. Not something that Diversity in Comics believes in, I believe, as a creator. So uh, I left DC Comics. Uh, in February, I had to finish my contract for them. I was able to leave in May, and I began to work on CyberFrog. And I put it up and I crowdfunded it. <clears throat> so essentially, what happened here uh, is that I left Burger King 
to go open up a hot dog stand on the corner and do it my way and be like, look, this it's I don't have the big corporate backing and sponsorship of Burger King, but they're not doing a good job right now. They're not selling what people want. So I don't have very much. I don't have resources. All I have are my instincts and I have my ability to market. And, uh, you know, I just have a dream. And I opened up a hot dog stand, started uh, selling hot dogs, in other words, Cyber Frog Blood Honey. And we have raked in, because of the fans, because of you guys. Oh, okay. We have raked in $625,000 for the first issue. Now, that's not profits. That's, that's money that has to go into the production of the book and the fulfillment of the book. But I'm telling you, it's a lot of money. And people uh, in the comic book industry are getting scared. Now, the first thing they want to do, obviously, is they want to shut diversity in comics down. But the other thing they want to do is they want to punish anyone. Again, they're all about punishment. They're all about, hey, denounce this person. Uh, you know, don't do this. Apologize for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically, they're all about trying to uh, salt the earth uh, behind people who come along with us for Comicsgate. Now, a lot of pros have. Quite a few professionals uh, and independent creators have decided that they want to follow our path. And it's scary to them. I think it's really scary. Their, um, their objective now, their agenda now, uh, is to um, figure out how to stop Comicsgate. How to, how to stop this little hot dog stand. Burger King is trying to crush our hot dog stand. That's ex it's exactly what's happening. I'm going, hey, you guys can open up hot dog stands too. We'll open up hot dog stands all around the perimeter here. Well, we're going to, hey, wherever you are, let's just open up a hot dog. No, you don't have to. They can be, uh, uh, what are they, what are they, like, are they pronounced heroes? They're spelled gyro, but I think they're pronounced heroes. Those, oh, those are so good. I'm going to have one of those today. You can open up one of those. Hey, let's expand to food trucks eventually. That's our goal, a food truck. Um, they don't like this. Burger King no like this, and they're trying to stop us. So uh, first, uh, a bunch more, a flurry of new articles came out. Terrible articles denouncing us as bigots and harassers and all of the things that they said during Gamergate, I gather. Uh, they have a playbook. Uh, it's important that they uh, you know, call people harassers and bigots. Uh, okay, so we've absorbed all that, uh, and we've tried to do it smiling. Uh, as, uh, you know, our movement, Comicsgate, is entirely filled with POC and LGBTQ and women. And, uh, we're, you know, we're not bigots, uh, obviously. You know, we're letting everyone in, and, and they're enthusiastically joining us. Everyone is enthusiastically joining us. Um, and we're not harassing anyone. We are quite the contrary, being harassed, uh, this time, uh, by the chief creative officer of Marvel Comics. <laughs> it's like... Joe Casada, who I know very well, uh, I've known him, uh, you know, like I said, for since the beginning of my career, essentially, uh, comes out, and he's been baiting Twitter. Now, uh, a few voices, uh, a few far leftist voices, uh, have kind of said aloud what they've been planning all along, which is, okay, now that you've gone, we've got to salt the earth behind you and get you to say things and do things and you know get write the articles and and whatever it is, start the rumors. Um, that will make it impossible for you to ever come back. And that's the plan now. The plan is to get me to never be able to come back to mainstream comics. I, I don't want to come back to mainstream comics. I don't want to. Uh, not until things drastically change or until I've got some control over mainstream comics. Uh, I, I don't want to be a part of this, this clown show, this goat rodeo. <laughs> I can't be a part of it anymore. You're not producing good work. And uh, you're using comic books as a means to propagandize people who don't want to pay to be propagandized to, uh, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, this is uh, that's the that's what's going on. We've got Joe Casada here, uh, and finally, after three days, I, I decided to respond to him. He goes, and again, for the record, my issue isn't with fans and their opinions. This started for me and continues to be my asking pros who align with a particular YouTuber. That's diversity in comics. Uh, if they stand by the personal remarks he's made about fellow creators. Now, I don't know how many times uh, I have to come out and say, no, I don't stand by the insults. I don't like the insults. I don't know how many times I have to say that publicly to Twitter. I don't like the insults. I don't like them. And I don't know how many times I have to actually go to Zach and say, stop the insults. Stick to broader topics. Stick to the big picture. It's not about individuals. 
It's about the big picture of what's going on in comics. And there are many, many uh, termites who are eating up comic books right now. We don't need to point them out one by one. Okay, that's that's not a, a, a great thing. That's not a safe thing to do. I mean, what we need to do is just talk about the big problem. So here's Joe. And Joe is basically trying to get me to uh, either denounce my friend, Zach, your boy Zach, or <laughs> he's trying to get me to say, no, I agree with him. 100. I like the insults. I love the insults. It's hilarious. Uh, both are stupid. Uh, I just said, no, Joe Quesada, the personal insults exchanged back and forth between Zach and the pros he contends with aren't constructive. They don't get you anywhere. They really don't. Uh, but they're symptomatic of the larger issue. He receives insults and he gives them back. We receive, we, meaning me, and then all of the other professionals who have formed Comicsgate now. Okay? That's the Brightweisers, Mitch and Elizabeth Brightweiser, Mike S. Miller, uh, my goodness, so many others right now. Uh, you know, we're out there building something new. We got Doug to Naple, Bigfoot Bill, the guy, the creator of Earthworm Jim is with us. I mean, it's exciting. It's very exciting. And we do. We receive insult after insult after insult. Um, and how did we respond? We responded by building CQ or, or C, uh, CG. I'm sorry, CQ. I'm thinking of GQ. Well, we are kind of GQ. CG, Comicsgate, our hot dog stand. Uh, Comicsgate is a terrific outlet for indie creators now, and I think it'll last a long time. I'm proud of these creators and fans. And I know you love Cyberfrog Joe Quesada. Yes, he does. He has to admit he loves Cyberfrog. He was there in the 90s. Now, a lot of people are sending me fan art of Cyberfrog, which is just, look at this. I mean, it's awesome. You, this, is, this is fan enthusiasm. It's, it's wonderful. Look at this. Somebody did Somewhere in Time by Iron Maiden, but with Cyberfrog. Uh, yeah, a lot of people offering me pie. Uh, and here's Joe Casada. Uh, well, first, uh, congrats on a successful on the successful crowdfunding campaign. It's great that everybody's reading comics. <laughs> it's like that's uh, that's rather vague. Yeah, everybody's reading comics. Ours. Uh, with respect to your reply, nope, nope, big old nope. He receives insults because he has gone after pros, and his reviews have gone beyond mere reviews. So they're beyond. They're beyond mere reviews. Uh, uh, hey, thanks, I say. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by, quote, a review going beyond a mere review. Is that like Tom Brevoort, who was one of the big editors at Marvel, one of the biggest, he, he edits Avengers, I believe. Tom Brevoort, huge, huge social media gadfly, another one, another, another gossip, uh, another weirdo, uh, asking Mark Wade, quote, what's the plan, man? When Mark Wade told New York City Comic Con attendees to bring Zach to him personally. So, Mark Wade, last October, issued a fatwa on diversity in comics. They said, I know he's, he said, I know he's going to be here. I know he's going to be at New York City Comic Con. If you find him, bring him to me. Bring me Solo and the Wookiee. Bring me Zach from Diversity in Comics. And, and then he, he added, he said, and make sure it's really him because, you know, if it's not him, what's going to happen would be pretty embarrassing. Now, what is going to happen? And then this guy, Tom Brevoort, this guy comes out and he's just like, uh, yeah, what's the plan, man? Like, hey, what are we going to do? How are we going to, how are we going to lynch this kid? Uh, <laughs> not a kid. He's, I think Zach's, is Zach older than me or younger than me? I feel like he's one year older or younger, either way. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. You, you have people you have people working for you who are actually making social media public threats. Misbehaving. Misbehaving. Um, and this is a weird thing. He says horrible things. People respond in kind. Uh, and then he slash you say it's because people have said bad things to him. That's precisely it, at least in my case. Now, I, you know, I followed the whole thing with diversity in comics. Uh, I watched him basically answer justly, uh, you know, some rather crazy things that were being said to and about him on the internet. Uh, you know, who said what first? I'm pretty sure uh, his reviews caught, lit the spark. Uh, his initial reviews about what was going on, about the costume changes, taking beautiful, sexy costumes that women were wearing and turning them into essentially, uh, you know, coveralls. Um, for what? For what reason? Like to, to remove the sexuality from comics and things like that. He would make whole videos about it and they were eye opening. They were incredible. And people began to insult him for it. Uh, he says, you can continue, Joe Casada. You can continue this narrative of victimization. Now, this is. 
what SJWs do. So here's what SJWs did to uh, my family. Um, they literally made us so that we couldn't sleep at night. We were so afraid. We're afraid of going places. You know, when they're actually, when you're being insulted and called a Nazi, uh, when articles are coming out about you being a Nazi, uh, you're unsafe. I mean, you feel unsafe. And, you know, all you can do is say, I'm not one, in which case they say, he says he's not one. Uh, and that is just, that's called the Streisand effect. Uh, there's nothing you can do except, uh, you know, I, I ignore it. I don't know how you ignore that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, being threatened, you know, uh, being harassed, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, that's my narrative of victimization. So uh, being sent, uh, having a, a professional uh, who created a lot of characters for you, Joe, uh, send a picture of his ass his butthole to me, sexual harassment. <laughs> That's my narrative of victimization. I don't want to be a victim. I, you know, I want to be a hot dog stand owner. I just want to run hot. Uh, I want to sell hot dogs to people. Uh, I don't want to have a narrative of victimization. That's what you have. That's what you're doing here. I don't want to be one. I don't, I don't, it's not manly to be a victim. I don't want to be a victim. Uh, he says, uh, I guess that's okay. Uh, wait, I attack because I'm being attacked, but where does that end? Uh, I don't know. Stop attacking us, and we'll stop attacking back, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is, quote-unquote, responding in kind to being called SJWs, uh, Marvel employees attempting to dock sack? And that's true. Heather Antos did all this. Uh, contact his employer and get him fired from PayPal. Uh, and tell the internet he's a white supremacist. All things that, all things that she did. I mean, it, this is one of his editors. Uh, spent all this time on Twitter uh, telling people he was a white supremacist, trying to figure out where he worked so that her cronies uh, could get him fired from his job. Doxing him, letting the internet know what his name was, what he looked like, uh, creating files on him. This is very weird behavior. But I guess it's a, a part of our narrative of victimization. Uh, Joe's like, oh, I've been attacked my whole career. Heck, even these last few days, I've insulted no one and heard out every reasonable remark I've received. I've called out bad behavior. I've been honest. So you be honest too. Um, I, I am being honest, Joe. And I'm not sure. Uh, you just saying, yeah, that's true. I know. Uh, isn't calling out bad behavior. Some of these people uh, that you're talking about uh, need to need disciplinary action. Some of the people that we're discussing and the things that they've done need severe, harsh disciplinary action uh, because of their behavior, much of which is actually illegal. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know. Well, uh, you know, you've got problems in your camp. I got. All right. So uh, diversity in comics, uh, you know, called uh, people purse puppies. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I said, everyone loves you. You're doing fine. But you got a great big blind spot that we're trying to bring to your attention. Uh, now, here's Joe's final thing here. He says, Ethan, do you support this guy who makes fun of your your fellow professionals? Now, this is a, another weird thing. They're trying to make comics into a community instead of a competitive business. Uh, I don't have fellow professionals. Uh, my fellow professionals, uh, all you know, uh, none of them stood up for me when I was being called a Nazi. None of them did. I think they were all very quiet, very worried. This is a worrisome thing. When people see this happening to someone... Uh, you either uh, tacitly agree with it by not standing up and saying, this is wrong. You're actually putting him in harm's way. You're, you're, you're causing him uh, you know, stress. You're causing him dismay. You're putting him in harm's way. Uh, and uh, even if uh, I don't like him very much, what you're doing is wrong. No, no. My fellow professionals did not stand. They were quiet. And I think most of them did it out of fear. And they should be afraid. They should be afraid of what this industry has become. It's not safe. It's not safe to, to disagree anymore. It's not safe. The chief creative officer of Marvel Comics is going to stand up and say publicly, why aren't you in line with the rest of us? Why? That's, that's the way the industry is right now. It's astonishing. Fans from all sides are watching because it matters. Decency matters. The creative community matters. What do you say? What, what, all the misspellings. Uh, what do you say, brother? This is astonishing. What do I say to that? You know, what do I say? Uh, I know fans are watching. Fans are watching Diversity in Comics. 90,000 of them are. 77,000 are watching my channel, Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Sometimes more. Creative Community Matters. 
when there's actual community, I suppose, and this is a creative community, Comicsgate is the only creative community I really care about. I don't care about this community. I don't care about the one that's been infiltrated by uh, social justice warriors who are manipulating you, Joe, or you are one, uh, into doing their bidding, <laughs> into trying to further excommunicate me. I, I don't, there's nothing you have that I want. I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything from these people. Uh, so what do I say? What do I say? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Joe. My fellow professionals collude and conspire to ruin my reputation as a quote-unquote Nazi uh, to promote the dissemination of disgusting, defamatory articles about me in left-wing news outlets and to harass my employers. I don't recognize them anymore. What say you? I don't. I, 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 don't, I, I care about my uh, fellow professionals within Comicsgate very much. Very much. They have created a real community where we can disagree. And we have had arguments. We've had very public arguments and brawls about certain things. But at the end of the day, we all get back together and we work it out. Uh, and it is about producing great comics. Look at this. He's like insistent on it. No, stop being coy. Do you support your boy? I mean, this is this guy is like 50-something years old. He's a, he's a, he was EIC a He's the chief creative officer. He works for Disney. And these people are all nuts. Uh, it's an easy question. If you don't see any attacks on professionals in his year or so plus YouTube videos and other statements, then that's fine. Just say you don't see it. Joe. Joe, your boy Zach doesn't work for me and I don't work for you. So quit the isolation routine. It's very important that they isolate this one person so they can destroy him. If you can take away someone's allies, you can easily destroy them. So if, they're, if you're able to, to scare all of somebody's friends away, all of their support group away, uh, then you can just chew them up. That's called isolation. I'm not going to participate. I'm not, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to sell out my friend. I, I'm not. Just like you won't sell out yours. Uh, so quit the isolation routine and answer for the people who do work for you. Tom Brevoort, Mark Wade. Or do you not see the poor behavior by your employer employees? You could admit that. We'd help you. We'd help you. We'd show you what they're doing. If you don't know, and it's possible that you don't, the stuff that you're saying here is very shallow, and it's very surface level, and it's stuff from like a year ago. We'd be happy to show you what's going on if you wanted to. Uh, no, no, you don't work for me, uh, and I have been answering uh, for people who work for me. I answer for them. Go talk. Go talk to them. Go sort it out. Uh, but you do support your buddy's efforts to etc. You cool with stuff like this, and this is diversity in comics is going around deleting his tweets now, which I wish he wouldn't do. Uh, but he this was a tweet where he was uh, criticizing Kwanzaa. Uh, he said, Kwanzaa, the only thing Kwanzaa ever talks about is being black. He's just black. You know, that's that's all he talks about in his books. That's all he talks about online. Uh, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, my answer. You asked what purse puppies were earlier. I hope you've learned what that means by now. Can you tell me what an Uncle Tom is? Because the guy Zach is referring to there is following around people of color, comic skaters, and calling them Uncle Tom. Can you justify that to us? And that is true. He is harassing. This guy Kwanzaa is actually attacking black members of our community, creators, and saying, you're an Uncle Tom. What's an Uncle Tom? Oh, we know what an Uncle Tom is, and it's racist and inexcusable harassment. Uh, look at all this great, my goodness. I mean, that just, that makes me happy. Cyberfrog's got a big sword there. Big sword. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> finally. You know, Joe's just like, I, I don't think Joe got what he wanted out of me, really. Uh, so, again, when they don't get what they want out of you, they just pretend that they didn't run away. I mean, this is all, all of this happened in order to make, uh, to write an article. Joe Casada versus Ethan Van Skyver uh, on Bleeding Cool. And it's all, it's just one article after the next. Bleeding Cool has done 10 articles about me this year. None of them were true. None of them were interesting. And they just continue. I mean, so, you know, I could do this for a while. Ethan, what, get eaten up by me? Uh, I think I know your answer by your inability to say it. All good. Just wanted to clarify for myself. I wanted clarity for myself. I didn't, what, what did I say that gave you clarity, Joe? Uh, I pointed out that while you're poking at the moat in my eye, I'm saying, hey, there's a beam in your eye. We're biblical now. We're talking biblically. I hope Mike S. Miller is listening. 
Uh, we're both on the East Coast. It's late and work beckons tomorrow. Uh, yeah, all right. Denounce Tom Brevoort and I'll denounce you, boy, Zach. <laughs> I'll denounce Captain Cummings, too. That's a freebie. I hereby, and by the way, let me just end this show by denouncing your boy, Zach. Uh, I'd also like to denounce Captain Cummings uh, and, uh, you know, uh, who else can I denounce? Ernst. I'm denouncing everyone. Let me just denounce them. Are you happy now? Uh, I, your boy, Zach, <laughs> I'm sending you to the Iron Maiden. Uh, just kidding. You're great. You're awesome. You're doing a good job. Uh, love you. Uh, love your book. Jawbreakers looks fantastic. Uh, together, uh, we are going to continue uh, with our little hot dog stand here. Uh, and uh, we're going to, hopefully we'll expand to that food truck. But let's get out there and let's make great comics for people. Uh, this isn't about some sort of uh, witch hunt. Uh, this isn't some political purity test. We're not going to tolerate any of that. We don't need anything from Joe Quesada. We don't need anything from Marvel. We don't need anything from any of these people. We don't need them. We're doing our own thing now. We're competing and we're, I think we're doing a good job. And I mean, we, we are, you know, uh, our existence is based entirely on the fans. Comicsgate is a fan-run community. It is entirely uh, powered and energized by the fans, uh, the customers. We professionals are just trying to keep up with you guys and give you what, give you, what you want. Uh, so as long as we have you, we have nothing to fear. And <clears throat> we don't need to denounce each other for the amusement of the SJWs in comics. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. Hello, potential Indiegogo backers. Hello, friends. My name is Ethan Van Skyver. I'm a comic book creator who worked for 20 years for Marvel and DC Comics on books like Green Lantern, Flash, Superman, Batman, and X-Men. But before that, I had a comic book called Cyberfrog. Now, Cyberfrog lasted from 1993 to 1998, and then it stopped when I went to go work for DC Comics. Now I want to tell the story of where Cyberfrog has been for the last 20 years. I want to write, pencil, ink a book called Cyberfrog Blood Honey that tells the story of gigantic alien hornets that come to Earth and conquer it, sending Cyberfrog into deep hibernation, where he emerges now in the year 2018 into a completely alternate reality, a new world where these hornets have taken over, devastated humanity, using human skin to make gigantic wasp hives and harvesting human blood to make honey to feed their young. Very few humans still exist. But it's up to Cyberfrog to save what's left of humanity and turn back the damage that's been done by these wasps with his brother Salamandroid and his friend Heather Swain. I want you to help me do this. We're gonna get colors by Kyle Ritter. He's a fantastic colorist and he's gonna make this book sing. Uh, I'd like this to be a 48 page one shot prestige format part one of four so i'm asking you to help me launch the very first cyber frog blood honey epic graphic novel are you in will you help me i hope so let's get this frog jumping again if you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community subscribe to this channel by clicking the laughing man face logo right on your screen Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.